Hello, my name is Henrik Hellström and I will be presenting a work titled Over the Air Federated Learning with Retransmissions. This is a work that I have done together with my two PhD supervisors, Victoria Fodor and Carlo Fischione. All three of us are part of the School of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at KTH, Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden. To start out the presentation, I'd like to break down this rather long title into three parts. So the first part here is over the air, which refers to over the air computation. That is a wireless communication protocol. This protocol is often combined with federated learning, which is a distributed machine learning technique that has gained increasing popularity in the wireless community. And finally, retransmissions is the novelty that we are bringing into this ecosystem with our work. So first I'll give us short background on over the air computation because it's not such a well-known technique. And to do that, we talk a little bit about interference avoidance. So in contemporary wireless networks, the standard is to employ interference avoidance. And by interference avoidance, I mean that we divide the radio resources between all transmitting devices. So for instance, in FDMA, we can divide the spectrum into small slices so that each user has their own slice of bandwidth that they can communicate over. Similarly, TDMA can employ diversity in the time domain and CDMA can do it in a coding domain. Also for 4G and 5G networks, OFDMA achieves the same effect. And the advantage of using such a scheme is that it helps us to reconstruct individual messages. So if you have interference avoidance, then the receiver can see the message of any individual device without much interference from the other devices. However, the cost is that this is very expensive in terms of communication resources. If you compare this to a single device having full access to all time and spectrum, they could communicate much more efficiently. So what do we do when the goal is not the reconstruction of individual messages? For instance, maybe what we're really interested in is a function of the messages, such as their sum, their product, or maybe a max function over them. This is when over-the-air computation comes into play. And the basic idea here is to make all devices transmit simultaneously over the same frequency band, thereby promoting interference. And then leveraging the superposition property of the wireless channel to compute the desired function in the channel itself. And it has been shown that if you modulate the transmitted signals in a certain way, then by combining them in the air, you can actually compute the signal there rather than computing it at the receiver computer. And given that there is some sort of matching structure in the wireless channel and the desired function that you want to compute, you can achieve throughput games that are approximately proportional to the number of users in the network. And this can be a very large number. I mean, even for just 10 devices, you'll be seeing approximately an order of magnitude gain in throughput. With that brief introduction of over the air computation, I'll move on to talk a little bit about federated learning. So in federated learning, we consider a setting where we have a distributed data set that is disjoint between all of the devices. So the user devices in the network are carrying the data, but they're not carrying the same data. Each device is carrying their own data set, for instance, that they might have collected on their own. And the goal here is to train a machine learning network using these data that is distributed over the devices. And in order to do that, in federated learning, the data remains at the device. So we never send the data to the server. Instead, consensus is reached by sharing model parameters. So what I mean by that is that each device trains the neural network using their own local data set, which generates a local update to the machine learning model. Then they transfer their local update to the server in the uplink, and the server will combine them using a weighted sum to generate the next iteration of the model. This model is then broadcasted down to the devices in the downlink, and the process repeats. The important feature here is that the server never actually needs to know any individual updates. It only needs to know this weighted sum. So over the air computation is appropriate for this application. Next, I'll give some motivating applications for this technology, such as edge machine learning. So in the picture here, you can see an excerpt from an article 
which is actually a lab on edge machine learning that is a collaboration between three major partners in industry, Ericsson, Volvo, and Hewlett Packard. And the idea here is to perform some machine learning task at the edge of a network. For instance, in this case, we're talking about vehicular communication, since Volvo is involved in the project. And to give a more specific example, we can talk about unmanned aerial vehicles. And an interesting application area of unmanned aerial vehicles is that of search and rescue missions. So if some natural disaster occurs, then these drones can fulfill multiple roles in assisting the rescue of these victims. For instance, it can locate them using image recognition systems, or it can serve as a backup communication infrastructure for the rescue workers, because often these natural disasters will destroy the communication infrastructure that existed there before. With that completion of the background, I'll move on to give a clearer problem formulation of what problem we're trying to solve in our work. And that problem is the reduction of noise. For digital communication systems, Shannon has established that for any degree of noise contamination, it's possible to communicate discrete data with an arbitrarily small frequency of errors. And as you probably know, this is possible by introducing some sort of redundancy of information. For instance, you might be employing a forward error correcting code over the channel. However, over the air computation is hinged upon using analog modulation. And therefore such a code is not applicable for this technology. And right now it's not so clear how we can reduce the error in over the air computation. And that's the goal of our work. I'll move on to talk a little bit about the state of the art to see how other researchers right now are tackling this problem. And basically, there's really only one big branch of research here, which is that of power control. So the idea then is to solve some sort of minimum mean squared error problem by optimizing over the transmitting power at the devices. And these transmitting powers are coupled with a post-transmission scalar eta at the server side. And this problem has been served for a wide variety of settings in the current literature, given different constraints, for instance, on the peak transmission power, as we can see here. And this idea has generated some good results. We can see here that compared to these basic baselines, you can see about four times improvement over doing a more basic scheme. However, the optimal power control schemes have for many scenarios already been found, and we're still at some sort of error floor that we can't go beyond which takes us directly to the research gap. So in digital communication systems, we have a way of trading off communication resources to improve the errors over the channel. For instance, the coding rate can be adapted. So you can employ a longer coding rate, which reduces your efficiency of communication, but improves the error rate over the network. Similarly, the digital moderation rate can be reduced or an error detection code can be employed to retransmit when errors actually happen. However, in over-the-air computation, there is no equivalent technology. So basically we have this error floor that we cannot breach at the moment. And in order to achieve arbitrarily low errors, there must be some way to trade off communication resources for improved estimation. And that is what we are proposing here. And if you remember the original title, it's probably quite obvious that what we are proposing is, has to do with retransmissions. So in this uplink aggregation step of federated learning, when we're sending the model update to the server, we propose that instead of making one uplink transmission, you could just make M identical transmissions. And then upon receiving all of these M transmissions, the server can average over the sum of all of these transmissions. And of course, this should bring some improvement to the SNR because the signal part is going to be the same in each transmission and combine constructively, while the noise part is going to change and therefore sometimes combine destructively. And this idea is a very simple idea, but it's the first step in this direction. And together with that idea, we've also solved the adapted power control problem. So similarly to what we saw in the state of the art, 
we're trying to minimize the mean squared error between the desired function that we want to compute and what we actually uh, receive at the server. And we found a closed form solution for this power control problem. And an interesting thing to mention here is that the solution depends on M. So it's important to know the number of retransmissions before you start actually transmitting in order to select the right powers. And the main result of our paper is an upper bound on the loss function of this federated learning problem. In this theorem here, we can see that the upper bound is on the gap between the loss after n communication rounds compared to the optimal loss at the global minimum. And it consists of a diminishing term that is going to disappear if n gets very large, and the post-convergence term that remains no matter how many transmissions are employed. And by taking a look at the power control solution that we saw, the closed form power control, you can actually prove that this C, so the um, convergence constant, gets smaller with increasing retransmissions. So the convergence rate per communication round is always going to go down as additional retransmissions are introduced. Additionally, we see a direct uh, dependence on M in this post-convergence term. So the noise-induced error is going to go down as well. With that solution explained, we're going to move on to some numerical results and compare these to using a single transmission. In the left plot here, you can see uh, we have compared four different settings where we have changed the number of transmissions in this uplink aggregation step. And this is training over a classical MNIST data set and training a classifier. And as you can see on the blue line, which is M equals one, we have 100 communication rounds available to train. But then to make a fair comparison, when we increase the number of transmissions, we reduce the total number of communication rounds. So if you do one retransmission, as in the green line, we only allow for 50 communication rounds in total. But we see that despite this, with only 25 communication rounds, the M equals four line achieves a higher classification accuracy than M equals one. And in addition to being more accurate, it's also more energy efficient because we're spending the same amount of resources on communication, but now we're spending fewer resources on computation because the devices only have to train their networks 25 times rather than 100. On the right hand side, you can see a simpler problem, which is a line fitting problem over high dimensional data. And as we can see in the next slide, we have used this to illustrate that sometimes you can have too many retransmissions. So in this scenario on the right, the optimal choice would be to have no retransmissions. And this is just a warning to say that the retransmissions can be helpful, but of course there are scenarios where the communication error is so low that you rather save your resources for more communication rounds. And it's important to note here that the choice of M is made before training begins. So there needs to be some sort of predictive capability of how to select this M. And of course, in certain scenarios, the optimal M will be one. With those numerical results presented, I move on to give a conclusion. So as we saw in the background, over the air computation can provide massive benefits in terms of bandwidth efficiency, up to being proportional to the number of transmitting devices in the network. However, for over the air computation, there's currently no way to trade off communication resources for improved estimation. So there is kind of this error floor that cannot be pierced with the current state of the art. And as a first step in that direction, we have proposed this retransmission scheme. And both our analytical and numerical results demonstrate that such a scheme can outperform one-shot uplink transmissions, both in terms of classification accuracy and in terms of energy efficiency. And that marks the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to have any further discussion, I'm very happy to talk to you. You can see my email here at the bottom of the screen. Thank you.